Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the Holy Gospel appointed for today from Luke chapter 4, especially these words. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the text. You may be seated. I must admit I am not too sad that January is almost over for obvious reasons. It's not my favorite month of the year. All the special activities associated with the holidays are over. It's still very cold, except for today. At least it's not as bad as, as it is out east. And it seems like a long time till spring. January is one of those months I could just as soon skip over, go right to February, and even March. I have that problem with other things as well. If I'm looking forward to something that I really want to happen, looking forward to some special event or activity, I'll just kind of figure that the time between now and when this happens is wasted time. It's not important. I'm just, just so anxious to get to this whatever it is I'm looking forward to and I have to remind myself that every moment of every day that God gives us is important and in our text for this morning Jesus reminds us of that he goes to his hometown and as it says he goes to the synagogue as was his custom and he stood up to read now incidentally Bible scholars used to think that the Bible was lying to us when it talked about Jesus going to a synagogue. The scholars somehow figured out that synagogues weren't around in the days of Jesus. So when the Bible says that Jesus went to a synagogue, it was not true. Because there weren't any synagogues in Jesus' day. And then one day someone was digging around in the dirt over there nearby where this text took place and they found a synagogue and they checked it out dug it all out and discovered that yeah this was probably a synagogue that was in use in the days of Jesus and so once again the scholars and all their speculations were wrong and the Bible was right there were synagogues in the days of Jesus and he went there regularly and he reads on this particular occasion a beautiful passage from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolls up the scroll, gives it back to the attendant, and then says something that I'm sure none of them had ever heard before at a synagogue. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. They'd never heard anything like that before. Yes, they had read the prophets. They read them every time. They gathered for worship at the synagogue. But no one had ever come into any synagogue and said, Today, this prophecy is fulfilled. That that's what Jesus said. And so whatever else they had planned for that day, whether it was to gather with friends at someone's house for a meal or go on a trip somewhere or do anything, whatever else they had planned today was not nearly as important as what just happened in their synagogue in Nazareth 
Jesus saying, Today, this prophecy has been fulfilled in your hearing. I'm the one Isaiah was talking about, anointed by God with the Holy Spirit to proclaim peace, liberty, good news to the poor, and so on and so on. And it's actually, as one scholar has pointed out, not the first time Jesus has used that word today in very important situations. We go to Luke chapter 19, the familiar story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, that tax collector who was vertically challenged, i.e. he was short, but he really wanted to see Jesus, because, but because there were so many crowds around, he thought of a plan to climb up on a tree so that as Jesus passed by, he could get a good look at him. For some reason, he really wanted to know what Jesus looked like. So he climbs up this tree, Jesus comes right to the base of that tree, looks up in the tree and says, Zacchaeus, I've never met him before, but he knew his name, come down, I must go to your house today and, and eat there. And all the people standing around, the judgmental type saying, well, Jesus, why are you going to the home of that sinner? He's a tax collector. He regularly rips us off. He works for the hated foreign go Roman government. Why are you going there? You must not be much of a prophet yourself if you would go to eat in the town of this sinner, in the home of this sinner. But he goes to have a wonderful meal, apparently. And at some point that day, Zacchaeus realizes he's a sinner and realizes that right there in his home is his salvation. And he stands up right in the midst of that meal and he says, I've done wrong. I've stolen. I've collected more than I should have, and I'm giving it back. And Jesus' response, using the word today for the second time in that story, first he says, today I'm going to your house, and then after Zacchaeus repents and believes in Christ, Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house. Today salvation has come to this house. And then one other place, Jesus uses that word as well. This time he's hanging on the cross. In the midst of his crucifixion, the Bible tells us he's crucified with two thieves, one on either side. And at some point, one of the thieves comes to repentance and realizes that he's getting what he deserves by being crucified. It's not someone else's fault that he's hanging there on a cross dying. It's his own fault. And then he turns to Jesus and he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus responds, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And I believe that truly happened. That that thief died that day because they broke his leg so that he would die quicker because it was approaching the Sabbath day. And that that very day, he went to be with Jesus in paradise. Because Jesus said, today, you will be with me in paradise. So what about today? January 24th, according to our calendar, in the year 2016. Will anyone be set free from their sins? Will anyone discover that God is favorably inclined to them? He's not angry with them, but his favor rests upon them. Will anyone's eyes be opened to see the great love of God and see others who need their love as well? Are there any prisoners who need to be set free? What's going to happen today? Jesus doesn't like to wait. When it comes to those who have repented of their sins, he wants that forgiveness to happen today. He never says to a repentant sinner, come back tomorrow, or do this and do that, and then maybe I'll forgive you at some later date. No, for those who have repented of their sins, he says, today I give you forgiveness, salvation, you are set free. Spirit has anointed me for this very purpose. 
Now keep in mind, the devil likes to do things today as well. Every day he sees opportunities. We see that happening in our text for this morning. After Jesus does his reading, at first they're all impressed by the gracious words that are coming from his mouth, and then they start to change. What they really want is a miracle. The fact that Jesus fulfilled scripture, that's not that big of a deal to them. What they really wanted to see was a miracle. We heard you doing all these other miracles in Capernaum and other places. Now do a miracle here, Jesus. And he refuses to do so. And so they wanted to get rid of him that very day. As it says, they drag him out of the synagogue out to the edge of town, out to the edge of a cliff, and they wanted to throw him over. But Jesus miraculously walks through their midst and goes on his way. Today wasn't his day to die. But it is a reminder that when the devil wants to do things, he wants to get stuff done today too. He's in a hurry as well. And he's always around us with his schemes, with his tricks, trying to convince us we're not forgiven, we're not set free, we don't have any hope. But today, that's not going to happen. Today, we get to walk through. Walk through all the tricks and the lies of the devil. Walk through anyone or anything that would trip us up through the power of Christ. Walk triumphantly being set free. Sinners who have repented of our sins, now walking free. Because today, God's word has been fulfilled in our midst. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.